I'm Joy Morris, inviting you to listen to True Stories of the Wild West, hosted by C.R. King, a production of R.K. Enterprises. Hello everyone, C.R. King here. Today we're going to talk about King Fisher, outlaw. Few men were ever accomplished as outlaws were, as John King Fisher was. A Texas Ranger wrote a, in a book that he wrote in 1898, and he said this, and I quote, Fisher, the most perfect specimen of a frontier dandy and desperado that I had ever saw. He was tall, beautifully proportioned, and exceedingly handsome. He was an expert with revolver shot, and he could handle his six shooters as well with his left hand as with his right. He was a fine rider, and he rode the best horses that he could steal in Texas or Mexico, end of quote. Well, it was easy to recognize King Fisher, for he was indeed a dandy, a man who dressed well. He was flamboyant. He wore a black Mexican jacket with embroidered gold thread, a chrism-colored sash under his two silver-plated ivory handles, six suitors, while his legs were wrapped in bangle tiger skin chaps. He was very charming, and he was very handsome, and he was extremely popular with the girls. Yet, he was feared. John was born, raised, outlawed, marshaled, and died in Texas. His soon-to-be-found expertise with a handgun and his man-killing abilities were not learned in the Civil War, neither was Wyatt Earp for both of these men never served due to being underage. He loved to run with tough crowds. The early part of 1870, Fisher was arrested for horse thief, but the charges were dropped by the persons whose horse was stolen, and he never went to jail. He was released. October of the same year, Fisher was arrested for horse thief, and this time, he was sentenced to two years of hard labor. Well, luck would have it. Fisher was released after serving four months. That's it, behind bars. Upon his release, he found himself working as a Callahan in the southern part of Texas. He joined various posses chasing down horse and cattle thieves. Now, the Nisees River at one time was the original border of Texas. At this time, it was. Long before the extended, it was extended by the war with the United States, who won that war, by the way. So they extended the border all the way down to the Rio Grande. It's now U.S. territory, and that's where he lived. That was Fisher's area of influence. Yes, it was. And he and it was a haven during the 1870s for its major industry was cattle and horse wrestling. In the early stages of being a gunslinger, Fisher had turned had teamed up with three Mexican bandits. He spoke the language really well, so he could slip in and out of Mexico with ease. But one day they had an argument. It was over the divide of their loot, their ill-gotten loot. Fisher shot and killed all three men. Things happened. He wound up controlling Three games in total, in a short course of time. Gave him three total games. He killed at least seven men, if not more, in that time period. And he now has control over 100 thieves. That's not an easy task. This killer of a man became the undisputed leader of the outlaw faction in a Nisi Strip of South Texas, and he was in total control of that region. Fisher purchased a small ranch near Eagle Pass. It was on a creek. The town itself became his headquarters. He was so sure of himself, he, he posted a sign on the fork of the road. One way he went to the town, the other way to his ranch. That sign read, This is King Fisher's Road. Take the other one. Part two coming up next week. 
Take care. Thank you. Stay tuned for next week's tale.